Cross-site scripting is a vulnerability that has many types. We can have reflected XSS, stored XSS, or DOM-based XSS. In a previous video, we understood the concept of reflected XSS and how it can be used to steal cookie information. In this video, we will take a look at the stored and DOM-based XSS types. Fire up your machines and let's start hacking. Let's start by a reminder of how XSS works and what we saw previously over the reflected XSS. As mentioned before, an HTML document is constructed of different elements, tables, paragraphs, heading, and so on. Sometimes a user might be able to insert a new element into the HTML page through a get parameter in the URL. Without proper sanitization, the new element will be interpreted as an actual element that's part of the page instead of being interpreted as plain text. If the added element happens to be JavaScript, that JavaScript code will be executed on the page. When an attacker is able to execute JavaScript, it's considered as a vulnerability because a hacker can utilize it to steal sensitive information. As we discussed before, a reflected XSS happens when the malicious payload is reflected back to the user by the web application. In reflected XSS attacks, the injected script is not stored on the server, but rather immediately included in the response sent to the user's browser. Now, introducing stored XSS, also called persistent cross-site scripting, it has the same principle of injecting JavaScript code into an application. But the main difference with reflected XSS is that the persistent one will not need any interaction from victim, like we saw in the previous video, the victim does not have to click a link that contains an XSS payload, a get parameter. Instead, the victim will be affected by the XSS every time he enters a certain page. In fact, stored XSS is called stored because the malicious payload is stored persistently on the server side, often in a database or file system, and is later retrieved and executed whenever a user accesses the vulnerable content, without requiring the user to interact with a specially crafted URL. Let me explain more with this example. Here in front of us, we have an incredibly clapped example of a blog. Any user can enter the blog and leave a message to express how pathetic this blog looks. So, if we enter the message InfoSec Mastery, for example, we can see that it gets stored on the blog and it will stay there even if we refresh the page. Now let's do our usual checks. We start by entering an H1 heading tag and see what happens. As you can see, this new message is bigger than the previous one, so we know for sure that this message has been interpreted as part of the document. Again, when refreshing the page, the payload will still be there. Now moving on to our next test, which is to test if we can execute JavaScript code. We'll just keep it simple. We'll just add a new message to the blog that contains a script tag that has a simple alert XS in it. As you can see, an alert box pops up on the page, so this confirms the XSS vulnerability on the website. Now the interesting thing is, when we refresh the page, we get the same alert box again. Keep in mind that we did not change anything on the page, yet the XSS is again triggered. We can take this a step further by opening private browsing. We enter our blog page, and again, we see the XSS alert pop up. And this is why it's called persistent XS, because no user interaction is needed and the payload will get triggered for any user that enters the page. So if we can imagine that a malicious hacker has entered an XSS payload that steals cookies like we saw in the previous video, you can already probably understand that any users that enters that vulnerable page will have their cookies stolen. I hope you can now differentiate between reflected and stored XSS. If not, feel free to ask in the comments. I'd be glad to clarify. Now let's move on to DOM-based cross-site scripting. DOM might seem like a scary word when you first hear it, but in reality, it's simple. DOM stands for Document Object Model. The Document Object Model is a programming interface for web documents that represents the structure of an HTML or XML document as a tree of objects, allowing scripts to dynamically access and manipulate the content, structure, and style of web pages. In other words, the DOM in DOM-based XSS refers to the structure of a web page that browsers use to understand and display content. In these attacks, hackers exploit vulnerabilities in this structure 
to inject and execute malicious code directly on the victim's browser, bypassing server-side security measures. Let's understand this with an example. In front of us, we have an HTML web page. And I precise this is just a simple web page, not an entire interactive web application. We are currently looking at a plain HTML document as indicated in the URL, so there is not a server behind this. The code of this web page is to the left of the screen. In the body of the HTML, we have a heading, this one. We have an input named search input, which is this one. We have a button labeled search, this one. And lastly, we have a div element named search result. This element is not yet visible on the page, but you will understand why shortly. When the button is clicked, a function named search is triggered. So what does this function do? If you don't know JavaScript, the function will simply just take the value of the text inside the element named search input, which is this one. And then we'll put it in a variable. After that, the value of that variable will be concatenated with the phrase search results for and will all be put as a value inside an element named search result, which is the empty div that we talked about earlier. Let's do a small demonstration. We type infosec mastery to the search input element, click the button, the function is then triggered, and now we see our text infosec mastery appear in the search result div. If you have been following along, I think you already know where I am going with this. As always, I start by verifying if we can inject HTML code to the page with a heading. The answer is yes. We can clearly see that our inputted element changes sizes to the size and H1 heading. We proceed to our next test. We add a new script element with an alert one as always, and we click the button. This time, we don't see any pop-ups, and our initial text does not appear either. I went to inspect the code to see why this is happening but I see that the script element is indeed there. We can clearly see that the script element is inside the search result div. What struck my attention is that the script tag is colored in gray in the source code. So I assumed that adding new JavaScript tags after the page has been loaded will not allow me to execute JS code. So I had to find another solution to execute an XSS payload. In the following test, instead of trying to add a script tag, I added an image tag. When I check the source code of the web page, I see that the new image tag is not colored in gray, so I know that it is interpreted as an element. Now, how will the image tag allow us to achieve an XSS attack? Let's see. The way images work in HTML is by specifying the source of an image that we want to display. So inside the image tag, we type src equals, and then we add the source of the image that will be included. It can be an image coming from the web or from the local server, for example. Now, what happens if that image does not exist? Conveniently, there is also something else that we can set in the image tag, which is the on error value. This value is only looked at when the image fails to be loaded. Also conveniently, inside the on error value, we specify JavaScript code. In other words, if the image fails to load, the image will execute some JavaScript written inside the on error value. In our case, we are going to intentionally set the source of the image to a wrong value of an image does not exist. And then we simply write our alert1 code in the on error value. We put our newly crafted payload in the search bar, click the button, and voila. Our XS has been successfully triggered. We have successfully achieved a DOM-based XSS attack. You may be confused because this looks kind of similar to a reflected XSS, but it's not really the case. While both reflected and DOM-based XSS involve injecting and executing malicious scripts in a victim's browser, reflected XSS relies on server-side processing to reflect and execute the payload, whereas DOM-based XSS operates entirely on the client side within the browser's DWUM environment. In other words, in a reflected XSS, an attacker crafts a malicious URL containing a script which, when clicked by the victim, sends the payload to the server, where it is then reflected back in the response and executed in the victim's browser. But in a DOM-based XSS, the payload is executed directly within the victim's browser when the manipulated script is executed, without involving server-side processing. You seem to be a fan of pen testing since you are still watching. 
So here is another web application pen testing video that will teach you something about becoming a better hacker. 